Good afternoon, everybody. Game time, Brian, otherwise known as the mailman, on this rainy, nasty day here. Uh, dark day. Um, wanted to do a video about the return of Jimmy Johnson. And yes, I say return of Jimmy Johnson because he has been hired or whatever, whatever you want to call it. He is now a consultant uh, to the Cowboys leading into the um, NFL draft. I don't know how long this marriage will last this time, but since the Hall of Fame, then the Ring of Honor, um, Jimmy and Jerry have gotten close. I think Jerry is tired of paying big money for players who cannot get the job done in the playoffs. Um, the Last year, the especially, well, the Green Bay playoff game at home where you were a seven-point favorite and you were never in a ball game, you got blowed out at, in your own stadium, uh, was a wake-up call for Jerry Jones, soon to be 82-year-old Jerry Jones. Um, he's tired of losing like that. Um, and do you know how you could tell that, Jimmy's uh, presence is here and it's active and you could believe it. I got it written down here. Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons. Um, it wants a big deal. Micah Parsons. There's leaks coming from with inside the building burner accounts. You could say whatever the hell you want. Something ain't right when it comes to that. Um, I believe that there's a very good possibility that Micah Parsons gets uh, traded uh, in this draft cycle. I just do. Um, there's too much smoke here. Dan Cilio of uh, Jacob Sports and the National Football Show uh, has said so. He basically said, Micah Parsons, he, uh, you know, he talked to Jimmy and interviewed Jimmy and and Jimmy said, and he said, what do you think of Micah Parsons? And Jimmy goes, he's no Charles Haley. And that comes on the heels of Charles Haley saying that the Dallas Cowboys are a void of leadership in that locker room. That's a direct hit at Micah Parsons. Now, I'm not here to tell you Micah is or is not a leader. I'm not in the locker room. But when you ask Jimmy Johnson a straightforward question, and he tells you he's no Charles Haley. And then Charles Haley is on an interview with, I believe, Hanging with the Boys, talking. I believe it was one of those shows. Maybe it was, uh, I'm not sure which show, but it was on DallasCowboys.com last week. And he said, this team is a, a devoid of leadership in that locker room. Nobody is the leader. Um, that's an issue. But the way this team and this offseason has went, they don't want to make anybody feel comfortable, okay? You got the head coach. The head coach is a lame duck. They did not – you don't do that. You don't do that in the NFL, especially in this day and age. He is a lame duck head coach playing out the final year of his deal, okay? He's not the only one. They bring in Mike Zimmer. They cannot – you give him any more than a one-year deal. Why? Because the head coach is on a final year. And the, as soon as you give Mike Zimmer a long-term deal or a multi-year deal, the agent from Big Mike will say, hey, 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 what about the head coach? We, you know, like, we need to work something out. So um, everybody's, you know, that's just, everybody's aware of what's going on. Dak Prescott, it's unfathomable fathomable that we're in a situation where Dak Prescott is most likely going to play out the final year of his deal and hit free agency. And Dallas may or may not be able to bring him back. That is the rolling dice in the most intense way you can with your uh, quarterback. Um, whether you like Dak or not, that's risky proposition. 
Rumor was that the New England trade uh, offered multiple picks for Dak Prescott. I don't expect Dallas to take it, but the draft is in two weeks. I will be there. Um, we shall see what's going to happen. I think there's a chance something's going to happen with all this. It has Jimmy Johnson written all over it. The one thing you can say about Jimmy Johnson is he did not want any of his players feeling comfortable unless you're an established player like an Emmett, like a Troy, like a Michael. He, I mean, he was smart enough, even with Charles Haley when they brought him in. Charles basically you know, went in the, because uh, Jimmy will rip you in front of the teammates. Uh, and Charles didn't like that. Charles didn't like being reprimanded in front of his fellow teammates. And, you know, Charles Hilly went into the office and said, Coach, I'll do anything you want. Just don't do it. Just don't yell at me out in front of the team. I don't like that. And Jimmy adapted and handled him accordingly. You know, um, I was on board with, with moving on from Mike McCarthy because I didn't want a lame duck situation, but it's all starting to make sense to me now with Jimmy Johnson in the fold, his reaction towards Micah Parsons. I'm telling you people where there's smoke, there's fire. If they can get two first round picks for him, if the Raiders uh, are indeed interested in Micah Parsons, you may see something happen. I don't know that they're going to Dallas is going to want to pay him $30 million a year. I think Mike and maybe the odd guy, odd guy out uh, in that scenario. Um, just my opinion. It's just a gut feeling. Um, but I'm not saying I want it or don't. I'm just from the outside looking in. What would Jimmy Johnson do? I feel like um, that might be a situation that uh, he, Jimmy might do, especially with his remarks regarding the player. C.D. Lamb, C.D. Lamb, uh, I think they're going to work something out with him. They're looking at a possible holdout. Dallas picked up his fifth-year option, but does have the right to franchise tag next year. We need to get uh, something done with C.D. Um, I really do um, think that Jimmy Johnson told Jerry, make them all sweat. Make them all sweat and um, see how they perform. This may be the type of situation where you're going to get the very best out of everybody and maybe catch lightning in a bottle. Um, we already talked about the coaches, but basically lame ducks. Jimmy always had you on the edge of your seat. I am looking forward to this. NFL draft that's going to take place. And I'm sitting here. It's this Friday afternoon. Um, in two weeks, I will be in the draft, and it will be day two. We will be discussing or maybe just closing down rounds two and three of the NFL draft. Um, very, very exciting times, but uneasy times if you're a Dallas Cowboy. Uh Player, coach, shoot, even in the front office, nobody's safe at this point. I I think Jerry was embarrassed, and he should be embarrassed. Um, they haven't done nothing since Jimmy left. Sorry. The nineteen ninety five season was a was the remnants and the end of the Jimmy era. They were able to win a Super Bowl with Barry Switzer. They did it with Mears. Thank you, Neil O'Donnell, uh Larry Brown. The cornerback thanks you as well since he won the MVP of that Super Bowl. But I'm going to close out this video in honor of Jimmy Johnson, and we're going to do a five rounds. We're going to do a five-round mock draft where we're going to trade our ass off because that's what Jimmy does. He trades. So let's get it going. Um, we're going to do – we're going to let – I'm not going to hunt trades, but if they come to me, I'm taking them. As we all know, we do not have a fourth-round draft pick, and that hurts. A trade Lance is that fourth-round draft pick. Let's see what we do here. Let's go. I'm not even going to be worried about who is on the clock or who is 
been a taken. I'm hoping we get some good trade action. If not, then I'll be annoyed. But we need to see some trades. Yeah, you could say we need a left tackle. Uh, we need a left tackle. We need a center. We need a defensive lineman. We need a lot. All right, let me hide that. Uh, All right, here we go. Um, we are on the board. Just look to see what was taken. Michael Penix Jr. is gone. Um, Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, that's not happening. But, you know, that's fine. Drake May, Malik Neighbors, McCarthy, Jaden Daniels. Um, again, let's not get caught up. All these players are going to be gone regardless of where they went now. Troy Fontenot is a guy that I would have liked. Toulouse Fuaga, another guy. Looks like the Niners moved up. Um, we are on the clock. Um, a lot of players there. Let's look at the trade offers. Let's see here. The uh, 2029. They went 52, 83, 99, and 155. Uh, we're going to go back to here and try and tweak this. We want this year's third. Let's see what they do for us. Uh, they accepted the trade. Let's ride. All right, we are on the clock. Let's just see what we're looking at here. Chop Robinson, Graham Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson. Our picks that we have, we have 29, 56, 73, and 87. I want to improve that by one more. Top, I want to get five uh, top 100 players, so let's look and see what we got. 57, 89, and a first. I'm not doing that. 51, 84, and a second. Oof. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is. Let's see here. No, I'm not going to do that. Counter. 57. Not going to do that. Now we're going to. Uh, we're going to sit and pick here. Okay. We're going to pick um, who I think they would take. Um, we'll see about 56. Okay. We'll go from there. I think if it fell this way, they would go Graham Barton. That's how I think they would go. They would go offensive line. I might do another draft just to see. But Jimmy Johnson will, would wheel and deal big time. We're going to reject that. We're going to trade. Uh, Cooper Beebe's on the board still. That's a He's a really good uh, player. Jonathan Brooks, the running back, we know they like. Um, we got our center, so we're not in on Zach or uh, Cedric Von Prahn. Uh Yeah, let's look at wide receiver. We got... Ricky Pearsall, we know they like uh, Ricky. Oh, Ricky, you're so fine. But we, since we don't have a fourth-round pick, what do we have? now? well, I did recoup our fourth. We got Graham Barton. So we are going to, let's see, the best players available. I don't know that they like Braden Fisk, so we're going to wait on that. Let's look at defense. You know they need linebacker. Peyton Wilson's on the board. Um, often injured, but arguably the best, the best um, linebacker in the draft. But we're going to stay away from him just because, just because. Um, let's see. Defensive tackle, Leonard Taylor, the... Third, Michael Hall, Chris Jenkins. So we got time there. We're going to go running back. Boom. 
Jonathan Brooks. Dallas's doctor did the surgery on uh, Jonathan Brooks. It was a clean ACL tear. Um, I think that they would take him in the second round. Uh, they have him high on the board. He would. He is the best running back in the draft if he didn't get injured. Uh, we're going to reject that. We are going to see. We got. We need to roll to the defense. Just okay, okay. Um, let's go to defense. Let's go to linebacker. Peyton Wilson has dropped because of the injury. I think this is where you could take him. Uh, they love Trayvon Wallace at eighty-two. Defensive tackle McKinley Jackson. So my goal is to get linebacker and defensive tackle in the next two picks. So by saying that, um, the the defensive tackle that we really like um, is this guy right here. He's a one technique that fits perfect. I want him in the fourth. I want him with the eighty seventh pick. So, but saying that, we need to get our linebacker that we want. If Peyton Wilson is there, we have to take him. As much as they love Trevin Wallace, let's ride with Peyton Wilson. Arguably the top talent in the board. You know that the Dallas Cowboys um, uh, will take upside on a player. Just remember, though, Jimmy Johnson's running it. No, we're not doing that. If Jimmy Johnson is truly running the draft, he may le he may talk to Mike Zimmer and say, Mike, what are you thinking? But let's see. Tre Trevin Wallace did fall, but we already got our linebacker. McKinley Jackson's on the board. Fits perfectly with what we need. We're taking him. We have one more pick in the fifth round. Remember, we do have a sixth and two seventh round picks, but I wanted to keep it. Uh, I would have liked to have, getting, have gotten five top 100 picks. We'll try and do another mock draft um, to see if we could do that. I wasn't going to reach. We're going to take the best possible players that are on the board. We got our defensive tackle. We got our linebacker. We got our running back. I mean, now we're going to be looking at best player available when we get on the clock. We had, uh, I believe that was a third round pick, 87. So we had two threes, no four. That's why there's a big jump between 87 and 174. Uh, we are on the clock, I believe. Oh, no, we're not. They're still rolling here. Jalen Wright, my running back, is gone, but we already got one. If we double up at a position, we double up at a position. So... We shall see. Who don't like a good mock draft? Good teams do this and go over the scenarios over and over and over again. That way there's no surprises when they get uh, to draft night. We're not doing any more of that. Christian Boyd is sitting there. Love the player. Um, let's go with all. Let's see here. I don't think they're going to go with the safety. Jarvis Brownlee, a corner, a Christian Boyd defensive tackle. Um, we're going to double up. We lost. Um, we lost uh, Jonathan Hankins. We chose. I think also that was a, uh, I believe that was a Jimmy Johnson type. Listen, he's an older guy. He's a, he doesn't play three downs. We need to go younger, bigger more violent. I think that's what happens. Uh, I'm going to double down on the defense and go Christian Boyd here. Uh, I think that would be the best thing. This is just five rounds, people. We got our center guard. Uh, he'll play center for us. Um, Jonathan Brooks, Peyton Wilson, McKinley Jackson, Christian Boyd. Remember, we'll have a six and two sevens. Not to, uh, not to mention the unrestricted free agents right after the draft, with, with, which Dallas normally excels at. Let's do it one more time. Um, five rounds. Let's see what happens. Let's do it one more time, people. We have a few minutes. Maybe we can be a little more active with the trades this time or be a little more liberal as far as dropping down. Um, 
but we shall see about that. We can't afford to get uh, too locked in on any names that are sitting there um, at 24. Hopefully, we get some good the trade action. You got uh, number 27 and a second. We're trying to get. We don't want next year's picks. We want to get more picks this year. 49, 80, 97. 54, 85. No, I'm not dropping that far. Maybe we can counter here. Maybe we can get uh, a 27. And maybe we can get 66. All right. Let's try and do that. They rejected it. Let's try and do it one more time. We're going to counter. We're going to try and get 66. And we're going to throw in 244. Boom. Boom. There we go. We made it work. We dropped down three spots. We get that third round pick. Let me hide this. Right now we're sitting at 27, 56, 66, and 87. I want to get another top 100 pick. So let's see what we could do. 52, 83, no. 57, 89. That's an awful jump. 43 and 44. For 27 and 87. Oof. Let me counter that. Ooh, I don't know that we could do that. I don't know that I want to drop down. 52, 83. I'm not dropping that far. 57, 89. Forty-three. I think we're gonna do this one right here. Let's go. Now we got forty-three, forty-four, fifty-six, and sixty-six. We get four stud players. Yeah, we're losing guys, but we need a lot of guys. We're sitting with back-to-back -back picks. Okay. Now in this scenario here, we got Graham Barton still sitting there. And we got Kingsley Sua Matea. We got Lad McConkey, who the Cowboys worked out. Um, Zach Frazier, you know they like. Um, let's see here. Do we go with our left tackle and our center? And we could just be beasts? Uh, quite possibly, that's what we're going to do here. Boom. 49 and a 4. 106. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get another top 100 pick. Let's do 97 and we'll do 233. Propose. No. Try it again. Counter. We'll do 97, and we'll offer 216. Propose. Reject it. Okay, so what we're going to do is pick. We're going to get our left tackle, a Kingsley, Sue, and Mattia. Uh, you want to talk about fixing your offensive line. This is what you're doing right here. We got our left tackle, and we got our center, guard, flex. We're looking good. When Zach Martin retires, don't forget, we got... Uh, TJ Bass reject. Let's see if we can do a little magic here. Let's do this and let's do this. Propose rejected 56. Who's on the board? Let's see what's there. Counter. If I do this and do that. All right, three more picks. We are rolling. We're not doing it anymore. So let's see what we got. We got 59, 66, 123, 174. We need a running back. Jonathan Brooks is there. We need a defensive tackle and a linebacker. Linebacker, we're still looking at Junior Colson and Trevin Wallace, who we love. And defensive tackle, 
yep. with his um, DUI that he just got. And he has some bad habits. We got plenty of options there. So what we're going to do, people, we're going to go with Jonathan Brooks. Yes, we're going to finish our offense right there. Um, we're going to reject that. We're going to look at linebacker. We're going to take Trevin Wallace because he fits best for what Mike Zimmer is going to do. Our picks are 123 and 174. We need a defensive tackle, uh, and we'll see. We're looking for that one technique. We're hunting that one technique. McKinley Jackson, that's the guy we want. Let's see if we can pause the draft and see where we're at. We have to wait a while. We're at 127. So let's see. Let's let it play out a little more. Or we're at 123. McKinley Jackson is gone. I'm I'm getting nervous. We're gonna let it roll out. We're just gonna see what's there. All right, we're not trading. We are going to see what's there. Defense, tackle, okay. A Christian Boyd would be a next guy that we're going to eye up. We do have 174, 123. So best player available here. We already took our running back. Brandon Coleman, offensive guard at TCU. We could double down on linebacker. Um Mm -mm -mm. Wide receiver. Javon Baker. Ooh, Luke McCaffrey. Let's see the let's see the quarterback. We got Joe Milton sitting there, but he's too that's way too uh early for him. We're going to double down with linebacker and take Jalen Ford. Let's go. Loving it. Now what we're trying to do here is get Christian Boyd at 174. Hopefully he he hangs out. We shall see if he's going to make it. That's what I'm looking for. If we can get a Christian Boyd, we're cooking with gas. Uh oh, it's getting scary. It's getting scary. Will he last? We got 14 picks. Will Christian Boyd last? Jonah Ellis would have been a good pick. We are on the clock. Christian Boyd is there. Let's go. This is what we're looking at, people. Maybe we don't take Jonathan Brooks and we take a defensive tackle, but... We got Kingsley Suamatea, our left tackle of the future. We don't have to move Tyler Smith. We got Graham Barton, stud guard center option. Jonathan Brooks, Trevin Wallace, Jalen Ford, a Christian Boyd. Let's go, people. That's how it's done. Um, again, we're only two weeks away from the draft. Um, I will be there. I expect something big to happen with the Cowboys. It's a very weird offseason where we have a lot of holes. I think they're going to make some sort of big trade where um, Micah, Dak, somebody is going out the door. Um, and I think we're going to end up with a couple number ones. So um, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, I will be there this 
Jimmy Johnson thing has me thinking big time. So with that being said, game time, Brian, otherwise known as a mailman saying, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.